Have you ever found yourself facing a seemingly insurmountable challenge? Maybe it's a challenge you've chosen for yourself. Like training for an Ironman. Or like going on a 36 hour solo cross country road trip to rediscover who you are. Or maybe it's buying a 1971 Airstream that's in rough shape to restore and turn into your next home with no prior restoration experience. Maybe it's a challenge that you didn't even choose for yourself and that life chose for you. Like your plans for your Airstream falling apart. What the fuck? Just try not to look at Like this. going in for a checkup because you hurt your knee three months ago in a silly game of pickup basketball only to find out you've torn your ACL and meniscus and will need surgery to replace it. Oh, well that fucking sucks. They said it takes like a year to recover. I was not expecting that. We now only have two weeks to finish our Airstream, a seemingly impossible amount of time to finish with all the challenges we had yet to overcome. Some days are good and some days are really bad. If we don't finish in time, I'll be stuck recovering in my parents' basement where there's no bathroom and we currently sleep on the floor. I didn't even want to think about that, so it was time to get going. The first challenge we faced was one that was constantly looming over our heads, and that was sticking to our budget of $35,000. We've already spent quite a bit of money on very essential, non-over-the-top items for our Airstream. Okay, maybe the marine speaker system was a tad overkill. Either way, we have just over $11,000 left to spend, which wasn't leaving us with much wiggle room. Up until this point of the build, we were able to use leftover wood from previous client builds for everything, including the walls and building the biggest drawer I've ever seen. That'll be good, baby. But the time came for us to buy wood for the rest of the build, and we went with carbonized vertical unfinished bamboo plywood. You know it's good wood when it comes wrapped in plastic. I'm not even going to say out loud how much it costs because it hurts too much, but look how pretty it is. Jack? <laughs> we were also still trying to reuse anything salvageable from the Airstream, like the hardware from the cabinets. It was a fun way to save money and also push Jay as a builder. Another challenge we constantly kept in the back of our minds was... I really tried to build this Airstream as lightweight as possible, and this is the upper cabinet, and this goes to show how lightweight I am building everything. You could just be really strong, Jay. Well, my pinky. How are they gonna know? All right, let's put it in. <laughs> The third challenge we still had to overcome was a challenge that kept coming back to haunt us, the bathroom. We have a very unique design for the bathroom that we've never done before. We're hoping to have it look like a countertop when not in use with the ability to easily flip it up and close it off when we use it. <laughs> Jay and I know we still have a lot to learn. That's part of the reason why we like to implement new designs into our builds. When learning something new, the footage looks a lot like this. Standing around and trying to figure out what the fuck we're doing. I'm going to well. Jay was trying a pocket door drawer slide and was struggling to say the least. What the fuck? After a few hours and a lot of undoing and redoing, Jay figured out the hardware. But even after finally figuring that out, we still had to face the harsh reality that sometimes things don't go exactly how you plan. Jay's too sad to tell you guys what happened, but he spent all day trying to make this table work. Doesn't fucking work. So you lift up the cabinet, the thing, and then it slides down in this wall, which looks great, looks clean, but then to try and get it back up, it's just so heavy. We had to eat half a day's work and $270. When unexpected challenges are thrown your way, you can either let them bring you down or you can use them to motivate you to get shit done. Jay's put on a pick me up playlist. He's gonna try to retackle this. This door wasn't going to work for us, so we found another solution. We instead went with hydraulics, something we're familiar with and know will work. With my surgery date coming closer and closer and our budget quickly depleting, we really couldn't afford to lose any more valuable time and money that comes with fixing mistakes. But of course we just couldn't help ourselves and wanted to try something new for the ceiling. So this is going to be our ceiling and we're going to do something a little bit wild here. I don't know how it's going to look or work out, but we're excited about it. We could only hope this would go better than the bathroom has gone. Luckily for me, my knee was in pain, but not enough to prevent me from working completely. I was limited in what I could lift, so tackling the ceiling was the perfect project and distraction for me. We decided to go with a fiber optic ceiling. You know, just going with the theme here of the Airstream and everything taking longer than it should. It required me to drill hundreds of little holes and feed the optic wire through each individual hole. 
As I started this long, tedious process, Jay sort of had to turn into a madman to make up for lost time. He started putting that bamboo gold to good use and quickly tackled the cabinets for our electric monitor. Then he got started on the bamboo countertop. As I filled each hole with a generous amount of silicone, Jay continued on what you could call our living room. For the couch, Jay challenged himself to use leftover aluminum we had lying around. We also thought an aluminum couch would go well with the aesthetic. We could have taken the easy way out with how little time we had left, but we wanted to continue to challenge ourselves. We knew in trying these new things, we were undoubtedly going to make mistakes. Oh, I messed up. Look at that. Jay and I were wondering why everyone uses cloth, like fabric. Train. We were wondering why everyone uses fabric when making these fiber optic ceilings and it makes sense because the wood chips so now I have to go through and individually paint all of these little holes but at least I can lay down while I do it that's pretty cool and when we did make mistakes we tried our best to stay positive even though that was difficult at times <sighs> I'm about to put up the thing in the kitchen that makes it look really cool that just really transformed the space I told you so. Our vision is to have bamboo flow from the kitchen to the seating area with a seamless waterfall effect. See the vision? When you've lived in a school bus and a van like we have, it gives you a pretty good idea of your exact needs to live in such a small space and for a functioning kitchen. Maybe we went overkill for this one, but our buddy Alex has a glass rinser in his rig and we were immediately sold when we saw it. After cutting the strings flush with the wood, it was time to organize the wires. You know the saying that things have to look uglier before they look better? Or maybe I made that saying up? Either way, sorting the strings on the back had me questioning whether or not this was actually going to look okay. <laughs> Don't pay too much attention to that. It's heinous. <laughs> but in the end, we were pretty pumped with how this turned out. Wow! That looks so cool! That looks incredible. When building something for yourself and your spouse, there are inevitable compromises you're going to have to make. Jay's about to do something that I don't know how I feel about. I'm just gonna show you that. I'm not gonna tell you what it is just yet. You can eat out of it. Ew. I've learned to become a good barter in our builds. You want your gross urinal that I can already smell, Jay? Fine, I'll take some pretty tile that makes me happy. After putting in curdy board and red guarding the floor watertight, it was time to start tiling. Going there. Jay had a goal of building out this airstream as light as humanly possible. Unfortunately, like any good supportive and caring wife, I crushed his dreams. But hey, at least he got his urinal. We thought we had planned ahead well by laying out the tile, but we weren't 100% in love with how it turned out. So we thought we had the shower done but the perfectionist in us wants to redo it. So we're gonna go back through and redo it now. Some days are good and some days are really bad. If there's one thing that I've learned from building, it's that you'll always regret not going back and fixing something that's bothering you. We've never regretted spending too much time on something. We have, however, regretted taking the easy way out and accepting something we don't really love. It's always worth going back. We didn't want to stop the tile with the shower though. We had a really special backsplash planned out for the kitchen. We're ready to work through the night to make sure that we get this airstream done, but this is honestly the thing I've been most excited for. I am so excited. I know you OGs will be so excited too. Are you leaving it hanging or are you turning them? I'm just gonna leave it hanging. You guys are gonna have to wait and see. Any guesses? <laughs> This is a saying that has guided us in almost every aspect of our lives. We've had it somewhere in all of our builds that we've lived in so far. So it was important to keep the tradition alive. When you're building your home, it's a challenge, but there's a constant energy of excitement around you that helps you embrace those challenges. There's something so special about being able to design each drawer to fit your favorite cereal, your favorite pan, and catering everything to fit your exact needs. For Jay, he wanted to have a space he could train on the bike indoors. So he designed our bed in a way that could do that. The plan is to have the back area be a bed at night, then during the day, it can turn into a dinette with a space for him to ride on the trainer. It's awesome. Ah. Yeah. Also, our friends Alyssa and Chuck told us about epoxy grout, and we always thought they were a little crazy for how obsessed with it they were, but after using it, we will never go back, and I also sleep with it every night.
We were making a lot of progress, but as my surgery day got closer and closer, I could feel my anxiety start to grow. Would we finish the Airstream in time? Would I ever be able to accomplish my dreams of completing an Ironman? Would I go insane during my long recovery? Would I let Jay down? I knew if I let myself sit with these thoughts for too long, I'd let them consume me. So I decided to focus all my energy on getting the Airstream done. I just hoped everything wouldn't hit me all at once when it was over. We're both losing our minds because we've been working long hours, but this is an important moment. We need to find out if Jamie's gonna fit on the toilet. Moment of truth. Wow, baby, look at all that room you have. We're gonna have a curtain too that can come around. As we continued building, all the days started blurring into one. Jamie knows how to use that cock. Oh yeah. We were getting loopy, working long days until we sometimes bled. Just bled on the airstream. But we were making a lot of progress. I know what some of you are probably thinking. Can't Jay just do it himself if you don't finish in time? But that's not really possible with how our production line works. So I often get the comment of like, like how's it possible to get a van turned around in six weeks and hopefully, fingers crossed, get this Airstream done in eight weeks. But the real secret is it's not just me. This woman is my secret weapon. I do all the, the cut and the assembling. And then when I'm finished with all that, I can kind of pass it along to Kels. She does all the painting, all the finishing, all the sanding. All the oiling, staining, sealing. And then I can put the units into the, into the rig. My role, obviously, isn't as skilled as Jay's, but he relies on me and I didn't want to let him down. Plus, he probably hates finish work more than he hates waiting in line at the DMV. Before I knew it, our last day to work on the Airstream was here. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I wasn't scared about my surgery tomorrow. There were still so many unknowns and I've never had a major surgery like this before. But looking back, it almost felt like as we conquered the challenges that came with the Airstream and continued to build through them, we were also building something strong inside of us that gave me the strength to accept that everything would be okay. We fought as hard as we could, but sometimes when you give something your all, it still isn't enough. So we obviously didn't finish the Airstream in time and we didn't meet our goal. I feel like sometimes in life, you make these challenges and you set these really high bars and you're not always going to meet them. And it doesn't mean that you failed, it just means you didn't get to where you intended to go. It doesn't take away from like who you become in the process. I'll have my surgery tomorrow and I'm excited to finally start the recovery and know that I'll be okay even though I don't have this place to live. Just got off the phone with the doctor. He said, Kelsey is ready to be picked up. He said she's a bit sleepy. You have two options in life. You can challenge yourself or you cannot. <laughs> Tired from surgery. But no matter what option you choose, life is still always going to throw challenges your way. And when you decide to challenge yourself, the things that life throws at you, the challenges that you don't plan for, seem like they're a lot easier to overcome. Oh wow, that's the, not that at yeah. all. Pretty shocked at how well my body's healing. I did not think I was gonna be walking. Less than three days after getting surgery. It's crazy. I'm excited, I'm nervous, and I'm excited to sleep, honestly. <laughs> mm -hmm. 